Welcome back to Machine Learning for Engineers. This is going to be a case study on image classification with local binary patterns. So we're gonna create uh, local binary patterns looking at individual pixels and then pixels around that uh, to be able to get this local binary pattern, create this feature for then using with a, a uh, support vector machine classifier to classify if this is sand, seed, or stone. As you can see, all of these look very similar, uh, but we're going to use texture to identify these. So uh, you can come to the machine learning course if you'd like to just run the code for this. You can come to apmonitor.com slash PDS and then scroll down here on the right to the texture classification. And here you'll see all of the source code and additional information. You can run this uh, also through Google Colab. If you just open it up and all of the source code will be here to run this exercise. So let's uh, get into this in a little bit of detail just so you can understand what's happening and why we're selecting the options here to identify these different um, sand, seed, or stone. All right, uh, first of all, we're going to import some packages. So I'm gonna import uh, operating system zip file and URL lib request. This is for downloading the photos that we're gonna use for training and testing. And we'll get NumPy as well. The Python image library will import image and image ops. And we'll also uh, use the path lib library. We'll use the SK learn, the SK image uh, dot feature. This is gonna allow us to use the local binary pattern. And that's how we'll generate that uh, local binary pattern of pixels around a particular point to be able to classify the texture use matplotlib and also uh, seaborn we'll also uh, get the let's see i guess i already imported that once okay uh, we'll do some sklearn pre-processing and also metrics and then we'll use a support vector machine implementation and scikit-learn or sklearn okay so that's it for the package import and we don't need this one, it's already imported uh, once. Okay, so now we're going to download some photos. Um, we'll get uh, download s3photos.zip, and it's available at this URL. And so we'll retrieve that with URL lib request. And then once it's on our computer, uh, so let me just run that. Okay, so it gets s3photos. Then what we're gonna do is extract the archive and remove uh, this uh, S3 photos, okay, dot zip. So we'll get the, with zip file, we'll open it up and we'll extract all. And then we're gonna remove the file. Okay, so if I run this now, you'll see that it removed that zip file and unzipped it and replaced it with these sand, seed, or stone photos and there's the test directory for seed, sand, and stone. Okay, so we have our images here that it uh, downloaded. Now we're gonna calculate some local binary patterns. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how this is done as well. We'll compute uh, LBT. This one is gonna be a function. We'll find the local binary pattern of all the pixels. Um, also, we'll normalize it for the support vector machine. Okay, here are some parameters. The radius is three, number of points is eight times uh, radius. Okay, so 24 points. We'll get the number of bins is gonna be plus two. Okay, then we'll calculate our local binary pattern. We're gonna again use this function, local binary pattern from SK image. We'll ravel that. Okay, um, we can get the feature length if we wanted to. There's the number of features. Uh, we had number of bins. Okay, so for I in LBT, we're gonna go through each of these 
and we're going to increase um, you know, so here's our feature list uh, there's our number of bins that we had so what we're going to be doing and let me just uh, use the graphics here on the right okay so here is uh, okay the number of pixels or you have a threshold a certain threshold uh, around that pixel and uh, you know maybe this is the black and white intensity okay that you can see around that pixel and uh, what we're going to do is have some kind of a threshold whether it's above the threshold or not and so you can see you know these are the black dots uh, these are white dots okay and then maybe this is a mix okay so that might be like an edge um, we might have a corner as well or a non-uniform and what we're going to do is we're going to put these into these uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 36 different binary patterns. And, and we're also going to rotate these. So if we're missing just two of them next to each other, uh, it's going to rotate it so they're all going to fit within this one. Okay, and this one would be missing, you know, this is three that are... Uh, white here and then the rest that are that are uh, you know darker um, we would fit into the number three okay and so all these are all the different combinations of patterns that you can have and we're going to assign each of those to be an individual label so here we have our our feature and we're just going to build this um, you know normalizing it okay and then we'll return our um, our feature here. Okay, so here it is with uh, the array that we're going to put in, and it's going to go through this uh, one at a time, building these uh, features. So let's now load our data. Okay, I'm going to load uh, by default. It'll be train. So you can do test or train, and I'm going to get the tag directory. So I'm going to use my path and get current working directory. And then add the tag name to it. I'm going to have a vector and then a category. Okay, so the data in the category. And so now I'm going to go through each of these tags. Um, and I'm going to get the stem of to get the label. So by the name of the folder. And then I'm going to get all the PNG files in that folder. I'll open it with PIL. And uh, if it's not, uh, the mode is not equal to L, um, then we're going to have, uh, get grayscale. We're going to convert it to grayscale. And then we'll save it, okay? Um, now, let's go ahead and just get the array. We're going to convert that to a NumPy array from the image. So the image is going to be a three-dimensional array. It gives the X and Y location for the pixel. And then for RGB, it's also going to have a three-dimensional um, value or a, a vector of three with the R, G, and B. But in the case of a grayscale, it's just going to be one number, which is going to be the intensity. All right, so we're going to convert this to an array. And then we'll compute the LBT, okay, the local binary pattern, using this function that we had here for that, that image. And then we'll append this to the, the data. Okay, so these features, we're going to append it to this, this data. And then we also know the category, whether it's sand, seed, or stone. We're going to append that label as well. All right, and then we'll return uh, the data. The local binary pattern data and then also the category all right so let's go with train photos here we have uh, vec train and cat train and then we'll also have our test photos we'll have vec test and cat test all right so we've loaded those in let me go ahead and just compute this this one probably takes the longest of any of the operations you can see it's going to take a few seconds here to calculate all these local binary patterns it's doing it pixel by pixel and there you can see it's uh, it's done. Okay, so now let's just list the categories. We're going to get the unique categories. We'll um, convert that to an array, and then we'll just get the unique values out of it and convert it back to a list. So 
so that we can see if it's sand, seed, or stone. So if you put different directories in there, like maybe you have grass or uh, some type of um, fabric, uh, you could put a new directory in there. It would automatically recognize that from the stem of the directory. Okay, so now let's go to our label encoder. So we can't use sand, seed, or stone. So we need to create a new label encoder that's going to um, create a, a label for the train and then also for the test. Now here we use the fit transform because it uh, fits it, it cr assigns a different label to each of these. So maybe zero, one, two. And then we use just transform for the test because we've already done that fit. So let me just insert a cell below and just show that label train, um, I have not run this one yet. Okay, so it's going to show the labels for each of these. Okay, I have five photos in each directory for the training and also for the testing. Um, so you can also see label test is going to be the same thing. I just have those photos. If you had a different number of photos in there, it would show up uh, with different numbers with the corresponding labels. So this is an example of ordinal encoding, and uh, you could even replace, you know, sand, seed, or stone with a zero, one, or two yourself. But this is just an easy way to do it with the label encoder. All right, let's uh, use a support vector machine. We're going to use the SK Learn version of a support vector machine. We're going to get a linear support vector machine, random state zero, tolerance one times ten to the minus fifth, and we'll fit that. So we'll use the data, there, there are labels, the local binary pattern, and um, so the, sorry, these are the features, and then these are the labels, okay, zero, one, or two. And uh, let's go ahead and just run that, it, it fit it. Now let's evaluate the performance, see how well it does on the test set. So we fit it on the training set, and now we're going to fit, uh, test it on this test set. So we're going to use the classifier. This is our support vector machine and we use the predict function. But now instead of vec train, we're going to use vec test. All right, and we now want to visualize uh, the solution, see how well it did. We'll use our confusion matrix. So we'll compare our prediction to our label for our test and we'll get a confusion matrix out of it. Now I'm gonna generate a heat map with Seaborn using that confusion matrix, and I'll put on some labels as well. All right, we'll have uh, X label and Y label predicted in actual, and we'll get the accuracy as well and print that out. So if we run this, uh, we can see stone, seed, or sand and sand, seed, or stone. And anything along this diagonal means that it was classified correctly. You can see one misclassification here where it predicted sand, but it was actually seed. But the others are all zeros, so it means it, it classified all of these correctly. And you can see the accuracy is 93%. So very good on the accuracy. Um, and, uh, you know, very good performance here. So let's uh, just talk about, um, you know, overview of what we've done here. Uh, we, on texture classification, we've uh, created this local binary pattern as features for the computer vision to identify textures. In this case, we're looking at sand, seed, or stone, but it could be used for brick, it could be used for other textures as well. And, uh, you know, they're gonna have different number of edges, flat, or corner. So you're gonna have, um, you know, for each of these, you're going to pick out, you know, this, this distribution of these local binary patterns, the 36 that can be anywhere along there, and some Substances are going to, textures are going to have more of these than others, and that's what the support vector machine uses to be able to classify, maybe this is brick, okay, it has this type of distribution of those. 
All right, um, so the next part of this uh, is to select a new material such as fabric, grass, or wood and add this texture to the training and test set. So you can go out and um, you know, take pictures if you'd like uh, and add them to this. Uh, so create a new folder with five new photos in the test set and training set folders and then rerun to determine how well it did. So just add to this. Uh, in this case, this confusion matrix shows uh, the accurate ones coming up this direction. Uh, these are generated with this folder right here. If you want to come to uh, GitHub, it's a little slightly different version. Very similar though, it's just a Python script for the local binary pattern and then support vector machine training. Uh, so you can use either one, either this Jupyter Notebook that we've shown here or this texture classification, and they should give the same results. Okay, a few references here um, where some of this source code was taken. Appreciate these examples and these articles. And also thanks to DJ Lee, a BYU electrical and computer engineering professor for generating this case study for us as well.